I'm really excited about Microsoft's Direct Storage API, and I've been following it closely, and there's some big news about it in this blog post that's focused on the Windows 11, the best Windows ever for gaming, so what will Windows 11 do for gaming? And the big thing here is apparently it's gonna be limiting direct storage API to Windows 11. They're trying to say, look how amazing Windows 11 is. You get this direct storage thing. And my thought is more, you're artificially limiting this to Windows 11. There's no reason it had to be limited here. And we'll talk about all of, all of this in a second. But for some of you guys, you're like, what the heck is direct storage and why should I care? Well, let's take a look at that. So first of all, Here's here's how so these slides I didn't make these these came from a Microsoft thing a few months ago that got out online anyway so here's how GPU assets are loaded in the normal method so they start out on your SSD and then they get loaded into your system RAM that then goes through your CPU for decompression and then that gets copied into your GPU's VRAM. With the direct storage API, the basic idea is that you skip the CPU. Um, I'm, I'm slightly in the way here, so let me just like, ah, I'm melting. Okay, anyway. Uh, so flow of GPU assets with direct storage for Windows. They, now they would go straight from, from your uh, SSD. And to be clear, the traditional flow here, this is what it does whether you're on a hard drive or an SSD or an NVMe SSD. In the direct storage, it's going to require an NVMe SSD, but it could be 3.0 or 4.0, but the faster it is and the 4.0 will, will be even better. Okay, so it's gonna go straight to system RAM, then straight to the GPU, and the GPU does the decompression. So the idea here is it's going to skip the step of the CPU, and the G it'll go straight into the GPU for the decompression, and that the GPU supports far higher decompression bandwidths, key for both streaming and load time scenarios, CPU savings significant at next gen uh, in out rates, GPU can support constant maxed in out, rate, in out rates for load time scenarios, and data is at its smallest until the destination, since the decompression happens at the destination. Overall, what does this mean? It means good things for load time speeds, what kind of assets can flow in a game. And if you're interested, like, what a uh, actual game developer thinks of it. I know I had an article here. Ah, so I was reading um, th this article here, which talks to the developers of Metro Exodus, because I'm playing that game right now and enjoying it. Good game. Anyway, and uh, so they were asked, what do they think about how this could be beneficial to open worldish games like Metro, for example? And the reply is, well, the key word there is beneficial, and I think it will be very much so. Faster read access doesn't just allow for faster loading times, but also faster asset streaming. So that not only seems to promise more content in the environment, but potentially more varied content as large assets, such as high resolution textures and geometry, are able to be paged in and out more rapidly. That will hopefully be boosted even more by the smart content fetching possibilities offered by tech like sampler feedback. So yes, I think we're seeing some very nice new technologies coming up that really open up the potential of that kind of storage. By the way, for your GPU to be compatible, as noted right here, uh, any DirectX 12 GPU will be compatible, though if they're compatible with DirectX 12 Ultimate, um, that would probably give you better performance. Okay, also, this kind of stuff is already happening in consoles, and on the uh, Microsoft consoles, made myself a little bigger there, ignore that, <laughs> anyway, um, uh, it's part of their Xbox Velocity architecture. So those consoles being able to boot up, load super fast, games can be frozen and started up like instantly. It is very impressive. But again, it's gonna be only available on Windows 11. That's a little bit frustrating. However, the good news is we have seen now that Windows 11 will be a free upgrade. So at least you're not gonna have to be paying for that. And um, by the way, I've, yeah, I've seen it will be a free uh, upgrade. And there's even a, I'll link this article in the description again, and a uh, somewhere in here, there's a link that you can use to check if you um, if your system can run Windows 11 or not. And apparently there's reporting that it's also uh, checking if your software might be compatible as well. 
So, and the, uh, the system requirements for Windows 11, by the way, since my channel here is mostly PC gamers looking at GPU stuff and, and all that, you're probably gonna meet this if you have a gaming PC. But anyway, uh, you need a 64-bit dual-core processor, one gigahertz clock speed, 64 gigabyte drive. That's up from the 32 requirement for Windows 10, four gigabytes of RAM. Um, yeah, and you know, at least a nine inch display, there's the resolution limits, okay, neat. Anyway, the display size limit seems strange to me. Anyway, <laughs> um, so back to all of this. Okay, so I'm really excited for direct storage. I'm annoyed that I'm gonna have to try out Windows 11 before it's very mature. I generally wait for operating systems have been out for a while, especially for gaming and, and, and stuff. I, I'm, I'm always a little bit concerned about uh, how buggy it might be at launch, that sort of a thing. But hey, Microsoft's trying to force us into that upgrade. Um, as far as the other things I mentioned in this blog post that might be interesting, they're going to be bringing in auto HDR to a lot of um, game, uh, which automatically adds high, high dynamic range enhancements to games built on DirectX 11 or higher that previously only leveraged standard dynamic range. And this is something similar to what they've already done on their consoles. And they feel like people have enjoyed that. Also in this article, they've talked about um, their uh, Game Pass, uh, being a big focus, I think it's going to be automatically installed, that Xbox app thing, on Windows 11 PCs. And they are going to be adding in the cloud streaming directly into the Xbox app very, very soon. So that's that's cool if you're interested in that. I mean, GPUs are hard to get right now, so if you're still there on an older GPU, honestly, cloud streaming could be an interesting alternative until the GPU market comes back down to reality. And overall, I'm very impressed with the Xbox uh, Game Pass thing and all of that, um, although I'm not currently subscribed to it myself. <laughs> um, what do you guys think about all this? Are you excited for direct storage? I know I am, but I am not real happy with this Windows 11 requirement. That seems kind of silly. Let me know what you all think about this in the comment section. I do read all of them, and I hope that you have an excellent day.